everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I am a crafter and a homesteader in a tiny two bedroom um, mid terraced house in the Cotswolds. I grow my own food, I make my own clothes and I live a really slow life in the countryside. Um, that is my new introduction now. <laughs> I used to say I'm a knitter and a sewist but now there's like so much more to this channel with the vlogs and things that everyone's been really enjoying so I feel like there needs to be a bit more of an introduction. Um, yeah I mean let's just say by start by saying sorry. <laughs> um, thank you so much to everybody who's joined this channel recently. We've had a big surge and new subscribers which is so exciting hi welcome it's so nice to have you here um i have got so many exciting things coming this year 2024 is going to be a really good year um i am really excited for all the content that i'm making um i thought i might just start this video simply by saying hello um if you don't know my name is rachel i live in the cotswolds in england um i am a writer and a content creator i work a lot with crafting magazines and um different brands as well mostly sewing and knitting um i run all of my own content stuff on my own socials but I also create content for other brands and things like that um so yeah this channel kind of shares that kind of stuff um all of my worky stuff as well as um my life in the Cotswolds here um living a handmade homegrown and slow life um so yeah <laughs> welcome um today's video is actually a follow-on from last week's video so you guys really enjoyed last week's video which was all about um my fabric that's currently in my sewing stash and um all of my spring sewing plans with that um this week i'm going to be doing similar <laughs> i'm going to be doing the yarn in my stash all the spring yarn in my stash and spring plans um which is really exciting um i am trying really hard to knit and sew from stash this year which isn't actually that difficult to do because the stash is quite full um i haven't bought any fabric until recently so i had seven months not buying any fabric at all i've just bought two um new fabrics for special events this year i have got my 30th birthday and i've bought some fabric for that and i have got a wedding my sister-in-law is getting married so i've bought some fabric to make a dress for her wedding but they will obviously get worn there's other things as well my parents are having a big wedding anniversary party this year so i think i'm going to wear the birthday dress to that and you know things get worn again and again it's my husband's 30th as well in september so a lot of these dresses will get reworn they're not just for one thing um so yeah i treated myself to some new fabric recently and yarn wise i haven't bought any yarn in a really long time not for myself anyway bought some for my husband to make his um anniversary gift he gets one jumper a year for our anniversary um although this year it was a little bit late i'm only just finishing it now and our anniversary is in january so um it's been a little bit late but that is going to be off the needles in the next day possibly by tonight i'm on the collar and i've only got about six centimeters to go so probably by this evening it will be off the needles and i'm really excited to get started on some spring knitting maybe some early summer knitting as well because i'm not the fastest knitter in the world so it does take me a little bit of time um to get through projects but yeah i haven't um been buying any yarn because i want to try and use up what i've got so that's what we're going to go through today um which is super super exciting so yeah i should probably just dig in really um because i've got this massive pile of stuff let's start with this actually this is probably the best place to start so this cardigan let me hold it up it's very bright in here so i'm hoping you can see that color it's a lovely okra gold color but on the camera it always looks a bit dull in real life it's a beautifully warm color this is a cardigan that i knitted last year i think i finished it in october and basically it's um too big i have narrow shoulders and i should have done a narrow shoulder adjustment and i didn't and so it means that it's like it should be a set in sleeve and it's like down here which means the sleeves are too long the bodice is about five ten centimeters longer than i wanted it to be because it's hanging down because the sleeves all the way down here so if i move the um 
like sleeve heart the armhole sorry <laughs> the armhole in it pulls the sleeve up it pulls the bodice up everything goes back to where it should be <laughs> um and i kind of lost my passion of working on this because I had imagined that it was an autumn knit because I bought some fabrics um, in the summer that went really well with this yarn um, and I had like a few different things. I just li I like to wear like okras and stuff in the autumn time but because it's quite a nice gold it actually works quite well for spring as well. It's almost daffodilly kind of, not quite as bright as daffodil, but it's a nice colour. Um, and I've got a few things. I've got a dress in my um, collection, collection <laughs> in my wardrobe that I made um, last year, which has it's like a white with lilac, but it's got some gold on it and it's really good color for this the fabric i just bought to make a dress for my sister-in-law's wedding has got some gold in it and it's very much a spring fabric but this really picks out the gold um so that's really sort of ignited my passion to get this finished to actually start working on this again so um my first thing i think i'm going to do when i finish my husband's jumper is um sorry if um i'm really blown out the sun is literally going in and out in and out in and out of the clouds i'm not really sure there's much i can do about it today really frustrating me i'm thinking this year i might have to invest in some studio lights so that i can close the curtains but the issue with that is i don't have a lot of space for storing them in this tiny house so we will see anyway that's by the by um <laughs> so i need to take the sleeves off take the collar and the button band off so frog all of the collar and button band um and because it's it's knit in pieces so it does mean that i can actually adjust the armholes quite easily without having to rip out too much which is great so i'm then going to have to rip it down to the base of the armholes and basically uh, where I've cast off underneath the armpit I'm gonna have to bring it in a little bit more and then also take out more so I think I took out like one stitch like every other row or something for a bit and then went straight up I'm gonna try and take like maybe two stitches out or something because it needs to be quite a sharp gradient because it fits correctly on the bust I've got a very big bust so it's the right width for that but the arms it's just completely wrong so I'm hoping that's not going to take me too long I'm hoping you know obviously I've got to do like I think it was about 21 centimeters from the armholes up to the shoulder shaping and um, probably a bit less for the neck shaping on the front so I'm hoping it's not going to take me too long I also think as well obviously it's going to be a lot less stitches I think I worked out that I basically needed to take out like 10 stitches at least um on the like on both sides um at the back as well so i'm gonna have to get rid of quite a lot um so i'm gonna have excess yarn because i've only got a tiny bit of this yarn left after making this which is great but i'm now gonna end up with loads more on I? <laughs> because i'm gonna be taking so much out but that's my first spring project and i think that's gonna get quite a lot of wear if i can get that done by sort of beginning of march time it's gonna get a lot of wear in march and april um i don't know if i'll wear it with the dress at the wedding because i'm not sure that'll look quite smart enough but i'll certainly like that'll help me to sort of make this dress look less smart it's a davenport dress that i'm going to be making i mentioned it in my last video um that i'm like that can i feel can be really casual you can wear that with like trainers and a car and obviously this card again it will sort of like casual it down a bit um and then for the wedding i'm going to be wearing it with like heels and you know i've got like a, ha a hat band and all that kind of stuff um so it'd be nice to have that done so i can start wearing it with that dress because i'm gonna be making that dress next week um because it's a fabric that I got from work I work for the Cotswold sewing centers I do lots I run their social media and do their content for them and um oh this light <laughs> sorry I must look like a right ghost um <laughs> but yeah um I'm making that quite soon for tutorials and content and stuff like that so although the wedding isn't until May I'm probably going to get quite a lot of wear out of that dress earlier so I really want to get the cardigan done and then it's like a full outfit so that's my first big spring project from stash and then my next things that I want to work on is um I always like to have a pair of socks going so I'll probably talk about these all together really 
Um, I always like to have a pair of socks on the go um, because I, I often do like just quite simple stocking net stitch socks that I can just sort of pick up anytime, work on in the car, work on, you know, when I'm like listening to something that I like need to concentrate a little bit on and I just want something that I don't have to concentrate on knitting wise. Um, so I always like to have a pair of socks going and I've got these lovely spring yarns. I'm hoping the camera's gonna focus on those come on there we go <laughs> now you can actually see the colors so i've got this beautiful pale lilac it's also got some like yellows in there and it reminds me a lot of like crocuses i've got this lovely yarn from james makes yarn which is a hand dyed yarn and it's beautiful pinks and purples and it really like to me it feels like a Monet painting it is actually from the Taylor Swift collection but I think it looks like a Monet painting and then this is a Zandra Rhodes one that West Yorkshire spinners did like pinks blues greens yellows and I just think they're lovely for spring so I think I'm sort of going to slowly pick these up um this is a self-striping yarn so this one I'll probably just do stocking net stitch simple socks however I'd like to try and branch out a bit this year and try some new sock patterns like cable lace etc so i think this would be really lovely in lace so i'm going to find a lace pattern i have 52 weeks of socks by um i think it's liner um and that's a really good book full of patterns so i'm going to look and see if they've got a nice lace sock so i think that's what i'll use that one for and then I think this, because it's quite, although it's got different tones in it, they're quite subtle. So I think this would be really nice for a pair of little cabled socks. Um, you will learn, um, if you're new to following me, that I'm a textural knitter. I don't really do colour work. The only colour work I have is if I have like a self-striping yarn or a self-patterning yarn. Um, so I like to do cables. I like to do lace work. I like that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm hoping to use this sock yarn for so yeah probably tend to make one pair of socks a month as i say i have um a small project on the go with a bigger project normally i've been quite absorbed in my husband's jumper so i actually haven't finished i've had a pair of socks on the needles since the beginning of december and i've got the end of the last one to do um so i'm hoping like once my husband's jumper is finished tonight i will probably then just finish that sock quite quickly and then i'm at a conference this weekend so i may even just cast these on <laughs> um because i think that might be quite nice just to be able to sit and just like with my needles um i'm always undecided about that though let me know in the comments below i asked the minister at our church like how would he feel if i was sat at the back of church whilst he was giving his sermon like knitting it didn't bother him at all but i know for some people they might find that a bit rude so <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think um is it okay to knit um during someone's talk or does it look rude <laughs> okay and now i think we'll move on to this little bag that i have here this is actually um a, a crochet project dun 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 i've done one crochet project before in the autumn i crocheted some pumpkins um and it's something that i want to get into a bit more because i think crochet is really great for homeware because it has that structure to it um and so my sister-in-law <laughs> sent me this lovely little um set to make um some placemats and some coasters for the dining table um i'd shown her the pattern that i really wanted to make and so she sent me the yarn and the crochet hooks and bought the pattern for me for my birthday last year um this is the yarn don't know if you can is that gonna focus there we go so it's a lovely sort of gray beige color which actually works really really well with my tablecloth i have an indian block print tablecloth um let me show you the pattern um, so she said it was very simple <laughs> um, and it's got like bobbles on the outside. Now at Christmas I tried to like get my head around it and I was getting there. Um, my mother-in-law, I was using spare yarn because I didn't want to mess this up. My mother-in-law is a very good crocheter. She made one at the same time as I did to sort of show me what to do. So she's made this coaster already, which I just need to finish off like the pom-poms on it, the bubbles, sorry, um, not pom-poms, um, and then obviously block it. Um, and then I can also use it as like a reference point. So I'm gonna give that a go. I'm gonna try at some point, but the thing is I feel like 
my head needs to be in the game and at the moment it's just so easy to just pick up knitting because I know what I'm doing um so we'll see if I actually get this done but I think I basically need to like have a quiet afternoon with YouTube that's always the way um <laughs> sit down with YouTube for like a good few hours like three or four hours and just try and figure it out and once I get going they will be really easy and I'm just like in a week bash out four placemats and four coasters to go with it so yeah I think that's kind of something that I need to just like get on with it may actually be a really good project I have um some time off at Easter mm, no I'm with family so maybe that's not actually I feel like I need a bit of time off to like get my head around it as I say I feel like it's just you know when you're learning a new skill that's always the way it's the same for me with sewing and with knitting it just took a bit of time and I often needed some quiet time with YouTube with nobody else around whereas with knitting you see now and with sewing to an extent if there's like noise and chaos going on I just get on with it like it's not a problem I can just do it because I know what I'm doing so yeah we'll see I'm hoping I'll get to that this spring because it'd be really nice we really need some new placemats the placemats we have now we got for our wedding as a wedding present seven years ago and they are just a bit dead I mean the dog ate one of them at one point <laughs> um so they really do need replacing <laughs> okay my next yarn i have to show you is this which is the drops brushed alpaca silk let me hold it up to the camera is that focusing i think so um you can see it's a lovely um off white color i think the shade is does it say does it say i think the shade might actually be off white no it doesn't have the shade on the ball band surprised at that i guess it means they can just print the ball band like for all of them anyway um <laughs> it is a luxurious blend of brushed alpaca and mulberry silk so it's a bit like kid silk um mohair kid silk which a lot of people obviously use the drops mohair kid silk um i actually bought a quantity of this to make a, a short sleeved christmas blouse about three years ago and um i ended up not making it and it's just sat in my stash all that time so for my anniversary this year it was our wool anniversary it's our seven year anniversary and the tradition in the uk is that you give a gift of wool hence me making my husband a jumper um so with all of that in mind um and the fact that i'm trying to be conscientious and use up my stash i said to my husband why don't instead of getting a whole sweater quantity of yarn for me why don't you just top up something that i already have um so that i can make what i want to make and i decided i was going to make the sunday cardigan by petite knit which i haven't actually swatched which is really bad should probably have double checked that that would be okay to use this for but i think it will be fine it is i think it's it because of the alpaca it's very fluffy so i think it can come up a little bit thicker than just like a normal mohair or something um so there is a possibility that it may not work but i also think as well that if it comes up really thick the sunday cardigan by petite knit uses um three strands so i can always use two or go down a needle size or something i'm sure i can make it work um but i wanted to make that cardigan because um it will go really well with my outfit for my birthday party in april um i also thought that it would be quite a nice smartish kind of i think like mohair cardigans and stuff look a little bit little bit smarter because they're a bit lighter they're a bit sort of lacy look um i'm going to crop it i'm going to shorten it that's the plan so that it looks good with dresses because that's what i wear i wear dresses all the time and also as i say my plan is to wear it as a smart like jacket over dresses i might wear it as a sort of cardigan jacket for my sister-in-law's wedding my parents anniversary party blah 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 so it's knit up on six and seven millimeter needles which means it should be a really nice quick knit and i think that's going to be really nice after knitting my husband's moby sweater which has taken me i think seven weeks now <laughs> i've been working on it it's taken a really long time um because it's obviously so so long in the body it's also like very um because it's cabled it's quite like you need quite a lot of yarn um it just it's just taken a really long time so it'd be nice to work something quite quick um so yes that is the plan with this is um just to make that up in 
probably so as i say like the yellow cardigan i'm hoping to get done by the beginning of march then this i'll start working on in march so that i have that done in plenty of time before my party so i don't feel stressed at all um and then at the same time working on some socks and maybe some crochet <laughs> um and then the next project after that so my project for sort of april probably end of march april um i don't know if any of these timings are realistic <laughs> for chronic illness that often affects how much i'm able to do and how tired i am so <laughs> um we shall see i don't know how long it'll take me to like sort out the yellow card again and i'm not sure how long it'll take me to knit something up in seven millimeter needles but i'm hoping quite quick so yeah this is sort of my project for april i really really want to make the stella quilt cushion by um Pen laura laura from penrose knits yep yeah, that's right sorry like my words couldn't come out then um and i want to make it to match our um lounge we have got some gorgeous um curtains that i've made curtain and blind i'll pop up a picture actually actually i haven't got a very good picture because i just took it in the dark i'll put up the picture anyway <laughs> um i used the escape to the chateau fabric uh, by designer angel strawbridge i absolutely love that fabric it is beautiful um it is the potager which is the, it means kitchen garden in french and um it's got carrots on it and bees and beehives and beautiful chive flowers and it's just stunning and our lounge backs onto our kitchen garden where we grow all of our food and um the theme in there is very much that kind of style we've got a lot of prints to like that are like allotments and greenhouses and we've got a beautiful ornamental um watering can that's hand painted um so yeah <laughs> um lots and lots of lovely um gardeny things in there so within the curtain though um there's lots of different colors so the lounge we've painted green um which i really like it's very relaxing nice color and then the curtain is like an off-white color and then it's got lots of colors through it it's got golds it's got purples it's got pinks it's got different shades of green so i really wanted to pick that out in the cushion because the stella quilt cushion has got the lovely like you can have i mean you could have as many colors as you want really you could just have it you know one color the star in the middle or you could have it eight colors i decided um because of what i've got in my stash that i'm going to go with four colors in the star and obviously therefore repeat them because like there's eight points um so yeah it'll have eight different points four colors blah blah um and then the background is going to be white um and so this is the yarn i'm going to use so this is the background yarn this is knitter's cottage which if you've been following my channel for a while i have talked about a lot because i have a cardigan in this i have the jenny jacket by petite knit um in their dk of this this is my friend vicky she is a shepherdess um she has a small flock of cotswold sheep but before she had those <laughs> she um took some fleece from um some sheep that live just down the road from me like literally I mean like half a mile I can like see them from the window um <laughs> and they're Romney's and um she turned it was Romney lamb wool she turned into beautiful beautiful yarn and so like that is just the best thing ever to have a cardigan made with wool from sheep just next door to my house I'm super excited because I think she's going to turn the she's her Cotswold sheep are in lamb at the moment and I think that she is gonna use their first shear their first fleeces to make some beautiful cotswold yarn and that's going to be like a dream for me i am going to have to make a full garment in that <laughs> that's going to be one of my treats to myself maybe this year or next year whenever it gets spun um is to have a sweater or cardigan quantity of cotswold um wool so that i can wear cotswold wool in the cotswolds <laughs> um but yes this is the background color i've got two skeins of this four ply and i think it's a dk that you use for the cushion so i'll be holding it double um if i run out i have a little bit left of the dk weight of this yarn that i used for my cardigan so i've got plenty to work with which is great and then these are the colors that i want to use i'll just hold them up so you can have a good look come on there we go sorry it's still trying to focus on my face so you see there's a purple a pink a green and a gold which are all in the curtain color um i wonder if i have actually 
I do, I have the swatch from when I ordered a swatch of the fabric to see what it looked like. This is the fabric. It hasn't got all of the print on there, unfortunately. There's beautiful like um, beehive and bees and things on it, but you can see the colors. So the pink matches nicely with the pink, the purple, it's a bit blown out, but you can see the colors all go really nicely with the curtain fabric. So let's go through this yarn. Um, these two are from, oh, brain's gone dead. These two um, I bought at Yarndale back in September. If you watch that vlog, you might remember um, I got this little set from Susan Crawford because I liked the pink and the green in it. I didn't realize that I actually was hardly gonna need anything for the cushion because at that point the cushion actually hadn't been released, the pattern, so I didn't know the yardage. So I now have quite a lot of this. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna be using this to make like a blanket or something at some point or whatever, anyway that's going to stay in my stash for a bit so I've got the green and I've got the pink there um so Susan Crawford um I think this is yeah hand dyed in the Lancashire Hills it is 100% British wool it doesn't say what it's just 100% British wool so there we go um that's the green and the pink and then the purple and the gold i got this year in my advent calendar i got a yarn advent calendar that's what this big box is from um adventures in yarn craft um she's based in birmingham i think she may have moved actually but she's based in birmingham i've had her yarn before i made my husband some socks from it really love her stuff um i got this is the it's a jane eyre themed yarn advent calendar um and i absolutely love it like so many beautiful things i have a whole other plan but i'm not going to be getting to that until the summer so I'll probably go through that in the summer with all of the rest of them because obviously I've got another 22 skeins in there this is only two but they are literally the perfect color for this cushion this like purple matches exactly with one of the flowers in the fabric for the curtains and the gold is really lovely as well um so I am really really excited for that um I think it's just exactly what we need. We have an armchair in the corner of the room that I'm hoping to reupholster one day, but at the moment, because it's like ugly underneath, it was a cheap secondhand um, antique armchair that we bought from like some random place around the corner from us. Um, and I've covered it in a beige throw because the colors underneath don't go with the room at all. <laughs> Um, so I've covered it in a beige throw and it just looks a bit beige and sad in the corner of the room. So the idea is that I make this beautiful, colourful, stellar quilt cushion um, that will sit on that chair and just bring some real life into that corner. So I'm really excited to work on that. And as I say, that's my kind of like Easter project. It's all garter stitch, which would be quite a nice one just to sit and do when I'm um, over um, with my family over Easter. Okay, so that is everything that i have to show you that is all of my spring projects using yarn from my stash as i say i'm not actually planning to buy anything um which is really exciting <laughs> i like using up my stash um it's going to be really nice to make some space hopefully in the stash not bring in too many other things um in fact i shouldn't really bring in anything for quite a while um i'll probably do another one of these videos in the spring in the late spring maybe like end of april or something where i show you what my plans are to knit over the summer using stash however if i get through all of these plans like super duper quickly <laughs> who knows um maybe i'll be like knitting up a storm i did knit really quickly in december i was really sick with a virus and i was just knitting and knitting and knitting and i produced quite a lot um i definitely think my knitting has got faster in recent years i think just because i know what i'm doing i have to like check youtube less and think less i just read a pattern and i know what it means straight away because i've done most stuff now i've been knitting for Oh, five years now, so <laughs> getting pretty good um, at just recognizing things in patterns and stuff. So yeah, I might actually get through this stuff really fast. Who knows? We'll see. So there may be an earlier update video. Um, but for now, <laughs> this is all that I have to share. Um, let me know what you guys are knitting for spring. I always love to hear what everybody is working on. Um, a few people have said what they're sewing on um, this spring in my last video, which was really nice to hear. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys are working on and I will keep you updated with all of these projects. I will be doing some knit and chats well quite a few actually <laughs> over the next few months um as I work on each project I'll try and do a knit and chat for each project that I'm working on so I can like 
you know and it may be a case of like I'm working on the yellow cardigan and a sock at the same time and I talk a little bit about both of those but I'll try and like keep um all of that updated in my vlogs and things like that um but yeah, um, thanks so much for watching guys. Um, lovely to have so many new subscribers. Um, to all of those who are new, a great way that you can support me and support my content creation. Um, I have a Substack which is five pounds a month, so less than a coffee and cake. And um, every week you get a beautifully written article about living a handmade, homegrown and slow life. There are tips like how to's, there are feature articles from amazing creators and people doing really cool and interesting stuff all over the UK. Um, I have a monthly seasonal celebrations post which is all about how you can really enjoy each month and really celebrate seasonally. Um, so the March one coming up is going to be a really gorgeous one because there's so many beautiful things happening in March. Um, I also often share about my writing projects, about my book that I'm writing at the moment um, and I do a monthly newsletter which is a roundup of everything I have been making, loving, visiting, reading, watching etc. So I will leave the link to my substack in the description below. If you do enjoy my content here or on Instagram, um, as I say, signing up for the um, substack, £5 a month is a really great way to support my work. I really appreciate everybody who signed up already. Thank you so, so much. Um, and yeah, I will see you all next time. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Um, lots of love. Bye.